Tamika. It's your boy E Rock Nim. And we've been married for over 21 years. We keep it raw. We keep it real. <laughs> and we keep it uncut. And we are Marriage, Marriage Takeover. Takeover. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We have for you um, one of our phenomenal guests who was uh, got a treat us. for you. They joined us during our retreats, and um, they kind of specialize in the blended family, ministry, all that great stuff. They have been such a blessing to us I'm trying to over tell the you. years, and we are excited to have them here on this platform to share with us some of their different things that we do during the corona. And I tell you, I tell you, if you did, if you were not at the retreat to hear this couple, you missed out. So I'm telling you now, you might want to check them out as well. Indeed. Indeed. So we're going to go ahead and get started with prayer. God, we thank you. Lord, we love you. Lord, we honor you. And we just ask that you would continue to have your way. Yes. That you would breathe over this session. That you yes. would breathe through the, techno the technical difficulties. That you would just have your way, God. That your oil would drip and permeate over and saturate the airways and the byways, God. That people will be able to hear what you have given this couple. Yes. In the name of Jesus, yes, Lord, Lord, penetrate the hearts. Help them, God, to deliver the message for the people who need it, who want it, who desire it. Desire it, yes. Lord. And we love you. We honor you. In yes. Jesus, name, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we like Welcome. to bring on. We like to bring on. Uh, My, you say this, you Milo know. and Alicia Briscoe with Fruitful, Fruitful. Family. Yes. Woo! Woo! Look at, praise hands. Praise yes. hands. <laughs> it's a blessing to be here as well as an honor. And praise God for putting it on your hearts to have us to come and just share what he's done in our lives through blended family and, and anything else that we might be able to share tonight. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm going to just go ahead and dive right on in there. Tell me how, how did you get to where you at right now? Um, being a, a blended family. Cause I'm, I come to understand, you know, uh, let's just say, I know that I can do it. Bless God. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell tell us because I, I we've come to understand that since we have been ministering that there are a lot of couples that are that have blended families and with some of them things I can just say what the Bible say but can you tell us how just I guess you can just name or go through I guess some of the rough times on how you dealt with those hard times that got you to where you at now because you know we've been knowing y'all for what. 11 years plus, yeah, it's been a while and ago. you know what I'm saying, y'all. it seemed like y'all just, we trying to be like y'all, so, ah. so, so help us, help, help. Um, I'll tell you what, I'll start with the fact that Elise and I were previously married, and when we got together, we went into this thing with, I know I did, with rose-colored glasses on. I figured, you know, once we got married, the kids would blend, you know, we would sing Kumbaya, roast marshmallow <laughs> by the fire, and everything would be beautiful. God would bless it, and we can skip on into the sunset. And mm. I was in, <laughs> in reality here. <laughs> which was probably like five minutes on into the sunset. Mm. That was probably like five and minutes since I, I had that drink in reality here. <laughs> 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 One of the first challenges we had was we didn't have a model to follow. So mm. there was nobody there that we can glean off of to get to know how, to learn how to bring different households together outside of, it was for us, it was trial and error. And the mm. whole time, but bottom line, it was the grace of God, quite honest with you. And a lot Amen. of Grace of God, because <laughs> some of the kids I was almost going to see Jesus a little prematurely. Um, <laughs> oh, man. They tried to take us there a few times, and they tried to divide us. And uh, I'll tell you what, I'm going to take a little step back and let my wife step in, because I, I can run on. Well the, well, the goal was to raise them up and get them out. And once we can raise Because I, I can run on. We was like, well, the, well, the goal. Yeah, we each other high five, and we, we was like, we did it. We got to the finish line. Um, uh -huh. we like, side, yeah, it was it was, of course, it wasn't easy at the beginning, but the good thing was 
we had already made a pact with each other along with God that there was no out. So with that being said, we were willing to go through whatever we had to go through to make sure that it worked. Um, and we're still in the process. Mm -hmm. We're just in a um, different place. Different in season. A different season of the process. Um, a better one at that. And now we're starting to see the fruits of our labors mm -hmm. with our children. Wow. wow. So that's, wow. that's the blessing. Um, I don't know. I, like I said, a lot of prayers. Yeah. A lot of prayers um, went up. Um, there were times I had to just go outside and find God because I couldn't find him in my house because I was looking <laughs> to see what I was about to do to my children. So I had to go outside yeah. <laughs> and tell That's him, okay, funny. I need you, I need you to get up in that house real fast because I'm not gonna be responsible for what happened. But <laughs> you know, seeing our children with their children. Oh, what a sweet blessing it is. I'm like, thank you, wow. God. You know, sweet victories there where they they come back and thank us. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right. They come back with Thanksgiving in their hearts because now they know what it's like to be on our side. Hmm. But you wow. had now let me a question in terms of some of the difficulties. Some of the difficulties were, like I said, the different households merging different personalities. Mm -hmm. um, they're being mm -hmm. brought up in one household, and we're trying to do a household this way. And quite frankly, the two of us came, came into this marriage with baggage. Right. So we had mm -hmm. our man, and we had to learn how to communicate and get along better between the two of us. Because I'm going to tell you what, if the two don't work, everything else is going to fall. Absolutely. It's going to fall. Right. 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 So we purpose to communicate. Now, mm -hmm. but there was some intense fellowship from time to time. Yeah. If you know what I mean. Uh, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> intense fellowship. <laughs> intense they fellowship. They were nice and pretty. But through, <laughs> through patience and the grace of God, we were able to keep pressing forward. Didn't give ourselves an out went through the stumbling blocks, went through the different attitudes, went through times of just not talking. And what we learned through the not talking, there were times that we learned how to table things when our emotions were leading. So we would learn to table mm. and come back wow. to it. And then we would find places that we could communicate with that brought uh, a better, that created a better environment. It's hard to argue when you go out to dinner. Right. You know what I mean? Mm. <laughs> right, right. Amen. <laughs> Come on. I'm not going to sit there arguing with you. We're going to talk through this steak at least. Amen. So, right, you know, right. right. So what we would do, seriously, but what we would do was we would table it until our emotions got out of the way. And then we'd go have dinner. Wow. And go have ice cream and talk. Mm -hmm. You know, hey, you remember that thing we talked about before we tabled? Is it a good time to talk now? Give each other permission. Let's talk about this. And that's compromising. That's oh, that's good. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's good. Now, now, let me ask this question. I was talking um, with someone earlier this weekend, and I mentioned them. Um, I mentioned you guys to them. And so the question that she had was, you know, or the situation that she's in is, you know, her fiance has adult children. So how do you handle the dynamics of being in a relationship with somebody who has adult children who may or may not show you that level of respect that you deserve. Hmm. That's interesting because when you were, I had adult children. I had um, two older children that weren't in agreement with our union in the beginning. And mm. there was no respect there. Um, there was really no communication at first. And so what we had to do, we still had to set those boundaries and parameters when it came to our household as well as our relationship. So when we uh -huh. had with those children, there were expectations, you know, that we put out there. Okay, it's okay for you to come into our home, but this is how we do things. And Mm. You gotta stand firm on it. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't waver. Yeah. And especially the the actual parent 
they have to be in agreement with their spouse. And I think mm-hmm. that's the hardest part right there. Especially, I don't want to just say for a single woman, but I think for a single parent, period, they have already engrossed so much in their children that when it's time for them to get into a relationship and into a marriage, they forget that the dynamics or the, the status change, meaning the children mm, right. aren't first anymore. Now your spouse mm. is first. And your children come under that. And I know, I I feel as though it's harder for single women than single men when that aspect comes along because I have a daughter that she's single and that was what she loves her children to death. And I'm like, okay, you know, when you get married, your children take us the back seat. Your husband comes first. She's like, I don't know if I can do that. Mm. And And it was good that she was honest about it. Right, right. That's a conversation that should be had prior to getting into the union. I think right. That's what I was going to say. With that, it, it needs to be a serious conversation. Absolutely. Because you said they're engaged. They're not married yet. I think so. Right. right. That's the difference. Yeah. Yeah. Some things need to be put out there. Yeah. And it needs to be a serious, heartfelt conversation. Mm-hmm. Because you can't move forward if you're going to go into something where you're going to have the vision, because you're already starting off on the wrong foot. Right. So, hey, look, right. this, is mm-hmm. I feel. this is honestly how I feel about this. And the fiance need to take a serious look at this and say, hey, look, does this woman mean this much to me? Because if so, then I'm going to have to have a talk with my adult kids mm-hmm. because y'all may be mad about this, but this isn't going to change. This is what So how can we work this right. out? Right. It's not going to change. And that's the key. It's, it's up to that, that parent of those children to have that, that heart-to-heart with those kids to let them know that, okay, this is what I'm about to do, and I would love your support and mm-hmm. everything, but this, I, I'm not going to be able to tolerate X, Y, Z. Yes, they're adults. So that's even more the reason why they should be able to be understanding. When it's a child, it's a little different. Being an adult, it's time to mature. Mm. Right, right. Wow. That's good. That that was awesome. Now let me ask another question. (laughs) Let me ask another question. I know that, um, you know, now there are quite a few people losing their jobs, right? And so it's affecting... Corona, Rona, however you want to die. COVID-19, it's affecting every household across America. So with maybe under people that are losing um, their jobs and maybe the wife now having to step up because the husband has been furloughed, what is some advice that you could give to them or some tips that you could help them through this particular time when maybe now the wife feels like she's got everything kind of the weight on her shoulders because she feels like she now has to move and do everything. How can the husband kind of help her out? And what are some tips that you can share with those families, whether they're blended or they're not blended? I think it starts with community. Uh, One of the things we learned in our marriage is to communicate how you feel. And when you're going into a transition like this and there's a different dynamic going on in your household, you got to be able to communicate that with one another. Sweetheart, right now I'm got to do this and you maybe take on this or blah, 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 things change. But it's, to me, it starts with communication and honest communication mm-hmm. and two honest, loving communication because the two are one. So my dialogue is going to be for us. It's not going to be for me. It's not going to be for you. It's going to be for us. So I think that's what should encompass the conversation when that happens. I think one of the things is um, what we have to realize when these things happen. I met a young lady yesterday when I had to go to the store, and she was sharing with me that this was not her regular job, but she had gotten laid off from her job, but she still needs to bring Mm. in income. And so she was working at the, the Target. And I thought that was so admirable. So I prayed with her. I wished her well. And, you know, I told her, I know you're going to come out on the other side. And I think that's what happens. Sometimes we get so prideful, uh, whether it be a female, when we get laid off of a job. Okay, get another one. I I don't mean, I mean, I don't know how else to say it. Get, Get another one. 
I don't care what it is. I don't care if you at McDonald's and taking my order through the drive-thru. I would have more respect for you and more love for you if you were to do that. Get, you know, or if you can't, if it's to the point where one parent has to be in the household for the children, okay, bruh, you up. That's all. It's okay. I'm going to still help with some right. of the cleaning and everything, but this is where we are right now. I think we get so in tune with this is his role, this is my role, this is my money, this is his money, right. this is ours. You know, right. you, if you're furloughed, we're both furloughed. Okay, because that's, that's, that's an income that's not coming into the household. So now what are we going to do? Let's regroup, let's reassess this thing, and let's keep it moving. And for those, I'm going to tell you, if for those couples, especially from the men, because a lot of times we guys, we don't like to have a whole lot of dialogue. Mm -hmm. Got to be able to have some dialogue. That's right. That dialogue is so important because the, <laughs> our women want to hear us say something and, and, and have some feedback on certain areas. Sometimes we are too laid back. Mm -hmm. So, and some guys aren't like that. Some guys, I think a lot of guys are, but that's when you got to get out your comfort zone and express how you feel about mm -hmm. it. And let's, let's come, let's like, 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 like the Lord tells us, let's reason together. And that's what we need to do. And then ladies, give your husbands a break because they're not going to do things the way that we do them. Right. So if, if they don't, you know, put the powder on the baby after they change them, the baby got a clean diaper. Praise the <laughs> Lord for it. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's good. <laughs> Hot dogs and beans for dinner, you be grateful for them hot dogs and beans for dinner. You know, you, you look, you're looking for the, the vegetables and the meat and the, and the bread and some nice iced tea, and he might got a soda, some water, and some hot dogs and beans. I want some hot dogs and beans. You better be grateful for him. He, he slayed and took them while you was at work. You better eat them. Right, right, right. Right, <laughs> right. But, right. Well, that's good. Give each other a break and, and, right. and work give together. Give each other a break. And, well, yep. Absolutely. Right, right. And then also, just to add, that was really, really good to add that the roles don't change. No. So sometimes I think the wives feel like maybe the role has changed because now I have to step into this new role or this new situation when the reality is you really don't. Right, right. The role still right. remains the same. The husband is still the head of the house. Right. So then how are you going to, to recreate your new normal in your household? What are some things that you're going to redo or re-strategize to make it cohesive for everybody right. in the house right now? Right. The role, the role don't change. It's the dynamics of it. That's and right. so, and that's, wow. the, and that's the thing is that, okay, you know, as far as with me, you know, we've been through it twice. Yes. I, I failed miserably the, the first time, y'all. The first time, <laughs> you know, the first time where, because you know, when you're military, and I was a dependent. And so the first time that we moved, I was, you know, I was a little younger then. So it didn't matter. In the job I got, I got it. But when we first came to D.C., it was the hardest time ever. Yep, I mean, ever. I couldn't even get a job cutting grass. It <laughs> was hard. And and it was like, you find a job today? But I can't keep carrying this on. I'm like, wait a but minute. But in my defense, <laughs> though, like, in my minute. defense, <laughs> I would come home from work. And in the military, you know, sometimes it's not an eight-hour shift. You're normally working like a 12 our shift is a norm. And so I'm coming home after a 12 hour shift after picking up the baby from daycare and this knucklehead is playing video games. <laughs> oh, like, well, you, so, you ain't got no job yet? Like what's going on? <laughs> but again, but see again, because, because you see, because you see me playing video games, but you did not recognize the house was clean. You didn't recognize did. that food, that dinner was cooked. Oh, so okay. yeah, okay. Oh, okay. Well, you, you don't want what the, you. We had one car because I'm not working. You needed to get to where you got to go. But that's what I'm saying is that just because the because the dynamics changed, the roles didn't. Because right. one thing that we do is that we look at what's not being done versus right. what is being done. And as I'm telling y'all, I failed miserably. Oh yeah. <laughs> And so, and so the round two, 
Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, and when round two happened, I told my son, I said, listen, give mommy two weeks. She's going to ask me how I found a job. Watch. Mine are, I'm just cause, curious. Because when it, when it happened. <laughs> What's when, the plan? Because it was like, because. You know, because when when she when she not she wasn't laid off, she what she was going to another job, and my offer was rescinded. Right, and so she didn't have a job. It didn't bother me. You know what I'm saying? It's still it's still the same. Hey, you go do what you got to do. You know, hey, I got the kids. You been here all day, whatever. And she enjoyed it. Been home for almost two whole years. No problem. To when she decided. So then when it came back around my turn. But to be fair, though, when I was home, I was also keeping the kids, so there was no daycare expense. When you were home, the kids were still going to daycare. Oh, everything still was the same. So, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't the same. <laughs> it, was, it was not the same. <laughs> it was different because we was able to afford that. <laughs> well, let me ask you all a question. Let me ask you all a question. At what point did you gather and come to agreement? It was the point that I recognized that it doesn't always have to be my way. Mm-hmm. Like if he is looking, because what I didn't, and when I say I felt miserably, I didn't think about how him as a man was processing not being able to provide for his family. Right. I didn't take into account how he was processing maybe pride issues, how yeah. he was processing yeah. maybe the inadequacies, inadequacies or the insecurities from not being able to provide. And so on top of that, I was bickering. On top of that, Ooh, I was, you not yeah, this, you not that, you not this, you not that. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't helping the situation. Right. Absolutely. Because what because when when you try to when you try to take on a role that um and if you don't mind, I, I have to go biblical really real quick. But if oh. you try to take on a role oh. that your shoulders was not made for, right. then that would make that would be miserable for you because your shoulders are not made for. I don't care how much you lift, how much you bench, how much you work out, uh, your 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 shoulders were not made for the role that that have been commissioned <laughs> to the man. What the world is that? Somebody's coming in. Oh. <laughs> so the so the role, um, and so when you when you when you look at when you look at the way that God has has structured it, because you ever notice how vital the man or the husband is to the home? Mm-hmm. You ever have mm-hmm. recognized how vital we are to our kids? And when you try to reverse that, or when you try to take on that, it's not it's like for me. Can I do everything that a, that a woman can do? No, because it's like I, I don't. I, I can't. I don't even know. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm not finna have no kids. My name is not on Schwarzenegger. I'm not planning no movie. But but it's, it's because it was designed the way that God has put had put it in place. And when you begin to rip down what God is building up in the man. Because now we're facing all this stuff. Because you know, when you ain't, uh, if you don't work, you can't eat. What that mean? I gotta go hungry because I've hit hard times. You know what I'm saying? But so now we're battling with this in our spirit, man. And, and, and you build, and you also battle with it, even in your natural man. So it's like your spirit man is going on with the fight, but you, but everybody see it in your natural man because that's what everybody's recognized what's happening within. Mm-hmm. And so when we have to battle with with not being not being the man that you know what I'm saying that we pride ourselves on being not being able to go out and get the bacon um now we're looking at how we how we looking to our children cuz we want to be the best example you know what I'm saying but then it takes on like you were saying on on Thursday Milo then that means okay if I have to learn how to be a chef then I'm gonna, I'm going to do what I have to do to make things easier because you still, just because you're not out, you know, doing whatever, you can still take care of home until the opportunity open up for you. Right. Because mm-hmm. you're not going to stop, now, you know, always mm-hmm. sitting on the, on the couch, ain't, ain't putting nothing out there. I mean, come on. You know what I'm saying? At some point, let's be real. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? But uh, but it's being able to still pick up that because, like you said, like the role don't change. It's just a dynamic. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Absolutely. And then it's important too, man, not to be so prideful that you can't go and get a job at Target. 
Right. Like everybody's facing the situation right, right now. I, I go flip burgers. I ain't gonna lie, because just you know, y'all know the Lord told me to leave my job. And I said, okay, wait a minute now, Jesus. You know who I'm married to, right? And I'm like, for real. <laughs> you know who I'm, I'm married not to. That bad. I'm like, something <laughs> got something got to give. <laughs> some got to give. You know what I mean? But it's we like because okay, I don't see it, but I don't, and I was like, okay, listen, if it's all getting bad, I'm going to McDonald's, flip burgers. Listen, it's been <laughs> It's been by almost 30 years of being at witness, but I still know how to things fuck. You know, I still there have to go. make my patties. There so it's like, if, if need be, I, yeah, I, I got to go make a move. But at, at this, when you know when, especially for the, I, let me say, the uh, the spiritual guys that are out there, if God has, has if God has called you to leave, don't just leave and sit because you actually have a job that he has given you to do right and and as we read as i read in um isaiah isaiah one i think it's like verse eight or nine it says um be willing and obedient and you will eat the fruit of the land meaning what that as long as you are willing and obedient to what god has called you and commissioned you to do then guess what he will provide right okay. and so it's that whole okay. dynamic because if she was bickering like she was the first time in this time, it will make it hard for me to be obedient to God. So then mm. it's like now how we're looking at the structure of the home. Because right. now it's like, wait a minute, things are just out of order. Amen. Right. Amen. 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 Is somebody growling over there? I mean, is somebody hungry? There's some wild noises on the other side of that thing. <laughs> really? <laughs> I'm like, is my man over there in the kitchen growling because he can make me Oh, oh, hey, I don't oh, know. That's uh, 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 you know, Mercy might be dying though, or you know, I want to get in the lap. <laughs> yeah, Mercy sleep. We put her in the sleep. Don't hole. even come from my bedroom. My is sleep right But anyway. Oh no. So, what have you guys been doing to be able to pass the time with the coronavirus? What are some things that you've done that you haven't been able to do? I'm glad. Oh, let me sit back. Go ahead. <laughs> well, as you guys know, y'all know I am one of those organized people. So uh -huh. I hadn't had a chance to organize things in the house the way that I, to my life. So I okay. ordered all the closets, all the cabinets. I'm working in the basement now. I've had him going through papers, shredding them, and he still has more to shred. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> so we trying to get rid of all these papers that we've had over the years, and um, we're doing some home improvements, like the light fixtures. All the light fixtures in our house was dated. So I finally got one floor done, so we're working on – Floor mm -hmm. number two next mm -hmm. week. Doing some, doing some simple, <laughs> simple modifications. Simple modifications. Home improvement. Yeah. Yeah. And um, puzzles. We I, I see them track lights back there. Look <laughs> <laughs> bad boys on. Yeah. Um, doing puzzles. <laughs> yeah, doing puzzles. And one thing we do is, you know, we both are still working from home. So when we're working from home, he works downstairs, I work upstairs. And literally, he stays downstairs until he gets off. Which works for me and works for him too, works I'm me sure. Too. So we stay in our offices until it's time for us to get off, and then we come together. You know. Wow, that's good. Time, that's you know, good. We're at work, but we're still. But also, we started a um a Bible study. Yes. On Wednesday night. Oh, sweet. Oh, awesome. A couple of other couples. Yeah. And it's not doing work hours, but we but still we're home, can't go anywhere, so. We started doing a Bible study. We mm -hmm. grab a book and we just go through that book, biblically based, and we'll read it during the week and come back together on Wednesdays. And that's our Bible study. We discuss the book. And we're, Wait, still, man. we're still building our business on the back end. So we got some things in the works for that. Still um, making some changes and putting some things together with the business. So we've been busy. Yeah, and, talk, busy and honestly busy. talking. More. And a lot of communication. Yeah, a lot of communication. Yeah. Oh wow. Good, oh, good, wow. good. We, so y'all don't talk during work hours, huh? It's hard to. It's when you're hard at work. to. I mean, I mean, when in the house, 
in well, passing, when I'm going up to get my eggs yeah, or something, yeah. I say, hey, babe, what's up? <laughs> and I'm going back right. downstairs. <laughs> Some friends of ours have asked us to join. They, they have a prayer call every morning at 11 o'clock. So sometimes we're able to get on there. So we'll get on that as well and pray with them. But for the most part, it's been good. I mm -hmm. mean, we don't have any complaints. No. I'm loving life no. right now. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> man, that's all right. That that's all. But you know, that is a that is a real good idea with both y'all working from home because uh, before I left, we was working at home together. It was so funny because I would be on a conference call and she'll be on a conference call, but we on the same floor. So it's like, you know what? I gotta go outside. I gotta go on the deck because I guess. <laughs> You know, because when you get, you can still get to that point when you just always seeing one another, um, mm -hmm. and you kind of miss that. The you know how, because when you have those hours away, you kind of miss that desire. You be ready, like yeah, I can't wait to get home to to see my boo. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And when you're home all day, look every time you turn around, it's like yo, <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my god. <laughs> Can you go sit down somewhere, please? You know what I'm saying? So it it really brings out that uh, that I guess that patience in one another. But that is that is awesome for you know for those couples that don't have that I guess that multi level home. Find your room. Right. Go go lock yourself in the room. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because it's that it's that you still have that desire, like man. Because then also also you can really find out during this time. Of really how much you take one another for granted mm -hmm. yeah. because they're always there mm -hmm. and it's like well wow I do want you always here until they broke my heart last night because I messed up on some string beans okay. they was like oh my god this is nasty <laughs> Throw this out. I can't believe you did this. Oh, I'm going to be so, on the toilet all night. What people don't know about my baby is that he is super sensitive. I am not sensitive. I'm and, a thug. <laughs> I'm a thug. And he is normally like, he's the better cook. He's the better, you know, he can get things down in the kitchen. He taught me how to cook. And last night, it was just kind of an epic Really, this week he was, had two two meals that was questionable. Listen, and uh, I don't see nobody else getting in the kitchen. Hey, so last you night, those well, we, off, bro. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so last night it was it was kind of bad, and we were just like, "Dad, oh, this is horrible. Don't do why this did you no do more. something different with the string beans? You normally do string beans super amazing. So why did you do things differently?" And he was just like, "Well, I just I just thought." Fine then, don't eat your string beans. Don't eat it then. <laughs> don't eat the shrimp either. <laughs> nah. Bro, so he was his feelings all day. Talking oh. about, well, then somebody else cook. I'm not cooking tomorrow. I'm not cooking. I can cook. I'm okay <laughs> with that. But or, uh, don't be in your feelings. It's okay. But, you know, and so those are, but, you know, you have, you, um, I guess, you know, doing this COVID-19 time, like you all are doing, you're catching up on the things that, you know what I'm saying, that your normal um, in and out of the house kind of keep you away from, and so same thing, same thing with us. Like, man, I just had to repair my wall in the basement. Oh my god! So, but it's you know what I'm saying being able to catch up on those things, and also just like you said that you're um, you're communicating more, yeah. and so and it's like that's a that's an awesome thing because are we communicating more? Yeah, I mean we have no choice. You <laughs> always in my face. <laughs> So, you know, <laughs> I still love you, pray, though. That's the one thing I am grateful for. Like, pray I'm, for I'm the most um, an intro, extroverted introvert, and so mm -hmm. I'm okay with being home. I'm a, I'm a homebody. I'm okay with being home, and so I actually love these people that I have to be trapped in the house with. So mm -hmm. it's a joy because, like, we don't hate each other. We're not fighting. We're not arguing. Yeah. Like, it really is a good time. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. And doing doing new stuff, we um we had to we um went over our wheels and stuff. Yeah, so funny with the kids. It the was kids like kids thought we was about to go that, under. <laughs> I was like, baby, it's just we're just having we're just, a conversation. We're preparing. But you know what? <laughs> but I wonder how many families are actually taking the time to put to put the plan together for when you are called. 
-hmm. know what I'm saying? During during right. this time, because it's like, hmm, you know, just like you said, you're able to update everything yeah. or to be able to fix those things that, um, you know, what I'm saying that you, I guess, upgrade. Let me say that, that being able to upgrade. Do I need to upgrade? Anything? Yeah, I do. I need to change my lights and get them brighter. But, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? But I, I wonder because, like, for us to to put together our will and stuff, because I know it, it wasn't taught to me. Right. You know, growing up, this was something that we kind of picked up along the way. And so I was like, you know, are we taking value? Are we using this lockdown in a valuable way? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this thing is, this thing is a, it can be out, outside of the fact that it's a virus. But what is God doing in this? And what is God yeah. doing in your relationship at home? You know, is he is he saying, okay, I need y'all to talk to each other a little bit more. I need y'all to learn each other a little bit better. Hey, look, I'll give you an opportunity. Like, for instance, I'm going to show you where he cracked my face on. I was saying how I would love to be able to telework more. So the first week of doing this, I'm like, man, this is kind of getting boring for a minute. And the whole spirit was <laughs> like, didn't, didn't you just ask for at least two or three days of telework? I zipped my lip and kept pressing on. God, <laughs> What God showed me was sometimes you're never satisfied with what I've blessed you with. I give right. you what you ask for, and then you, when I give it to you, you're complaining. Look, mm. God gave me this woman. Am I going to complain about it, or I'm going to make the best out of this opportunity that he's given me to stay home and spend time right. with each other? He chose me. So, <laughs> <laughs> and, so what I'm saying is it's your perspective when we're in this season or what, how you're going to handle it. You're going to mope and groan because right. you can't get out of the house? Or you're going to say, hey, God, what you want me to do today? How you want me to flow today? Lord, give, help us to have patience with each other while we're in the house. Help us to be able to do things together right. and learn each other a little bit more. That kind of thing. Right. right. Oh, man, that, that's awesome. Right. Also, you got to realize, you know, everybody's so in a rush to get to the so-called norm, and they're not paying attention. If, if you're not careful, you know, you're going to miss what God is trying to do in this season. I really believe that this is a second chance that he's given not oh, only yeah. unbelievers, but believers to get it right, to come back to their first love, to put him first, because we've allowed all this busyness, our jobs, our abilities, um, the fact that we can come and go as we please, you know, go shopping or whatever have you. And you know, I love shopping, but we got to make sure that our priorities are in order. We got to make sure that mm. God is that have no other God before me. Mm -hmm. You know, I right, have, right. Mm -hmm. and we haven't been doing a good job of that. Yeah. And I believe right. that this is the wake up call. Because when do we really rush to God or run to Him when we're in mm. a situation? Oh. When we're right. in trouble, that's when we press in. That's when we go running mm. to God. So He had to stop everything. No one, no one could do that but God. He shut right. the whole right. world down. The whole world. Yeah. He didn't just take right. one entity. He took the whole world down and said, look, y'all yeah. better pay attention. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I have really been appreciating this time because, I mean, he's just been downloading so much. I'm like, okay, God, you, I don't need the new normal. I just want to get on the other side to see what you got next. For us. Right. Yeah. If we come with a different perspective, then, you know, we won't lose ourselves in this time. We won't lose our minds. We won't lose the sense of, oh, my goodness, what about this? What about that? He has given us everything we need for this situation. Yep. Amen. He provided yep. us with everything we need. And we're, we're just a little lower than him. So why should we worry about what we're going to eat, what we're going to drink, what we're going to wear, all those kind of things. He's going to make provisions for that. He even bless them. Right. He's going to bless them. Ah, that's all. He's going to bring them small. Them are some annoying string beans. Y'all yeah, didn't know it. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. <laughs> yes, indeed. They're going to come around for a second time. They're going to be better. Yes. <laughs> See. 
Yes, so. and I, and you are so right. There was one thing that God had given given me, and I think, like I said, it was corporately because this time is a strategic planning time. So as you are refocusing and you're resetting things spiritually for yourself, write down what God has given you. He reminded mm-hmm. me of Habakkuk two through four. Or was it two through five where you write the vision, make it plain so that he that read it will sit, you know, be, be able to read it and run with it. And yeah. not only that, understanding that the just shall live by his faith. So it's not saying that the just is going to live by somebody else's faith. The just is going to live by your own faith. So in this time, you're, you're building your faith. You're mm-hmm. eating and developing and creating a new faith level so that you'll be able to endure this time. So as he's giving you everything that he's giving you in this time and you're writing it down, when we get on the other side of this, it's going to be a strategic I plan mean. for oh. him to do exactly what he wants you to do. Sweatless victory. Sweatless victory. That's what's going on. You know what he Absolutely. showed me the other day? He showed me, he showed me, he showed me a, um, something basic. <laughs> he showed me a, a caterpillar. This is an incubation time or cocoon time for those believers. And as we draw in and allow, mm, as we allow the Holy Spirit to minister to us while we end this incubation time, when we come out of this, we're going to be different. We're going to look different. We're going to flow different. We're not going to be crawling. Uh, We're going to be flying. Mm -hmm. And And the purpose of it is not for us, it's for him, but to reach and touch other people. See, a butterfly can get around a lot further and a lot more frequent than a caterpillar can. But it's got to spend right. that time to get ministered to by the Holy Spirit. But when it's done with you, watch how many people, those of us who press in and hear what the Holy Spirit is saying, when we come out, watch how many people we're touching because the Holy Spirit, we're going to avail ourselves to the Holy Spirit to be used by him. Right, so that's right, the whole right. that we had before we went into incubation, we come out, we're going to be touching more. I just, right. He just showed me that. Yeah, Amen. absolutely. Amen. Hey, Amen. I believe that because uh, I don't receive like three, four words. They kept saying, get ready, get ready, because when this thing is out, I'm on the move. I said, I'm wifey. I, I got, it's already, God has already set up two places that I got to go to soon as it's, soon as it's time to take off. And I'm just like, oh my God, what mm-hmm. are you doing? I thought all this time was just for me. <laughs> I'm enjoying myself. Yeah. I don't want to pour this on, but well, I mean, but you know what I'm saying? When you're using, when you're using the time God has, it was so funny because Sharon Tamika is just like, uh, uh, I think it's in Exodus. I believe it was in Exodus. Mm, I might be wrong. But I have to go back and I, I call it to you later. I thought about it a couple of weeks ago. But the Lord was like, did I, did I not tell you to get comfortable in Babylon? Mm-hmm. Meaning, um, getting comfortable meaning that, hey, it's not saying I'm going to be here forever, but I got to find a positive in this negative place. Mm-hmm. Meaning that I, when mm-hmm. I focus my thoughts on those things that are above and not the things that I'm dealing with, mm-hmm. then I keep my eyes pointed towards Christ to be able to receive that that he has, that he is, that he is pouring into me. Because mm-hmm. oftentimes that we can't see what God is doing because we're busy looking at the place that we're in. Right. And so when right. we are, when we're missing it by being in the, by looking at our present circumstance, but not the circumstance to come. What is the circumstance to come? Is that we are free, meaning that is that nothing else, nothing can hold us, nothing can 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 penetrate what God has put a feel has put a force field around. And so he was like, yeah, get remember, get comfortable here, because when you in a place of free, you can roam. You know, you get tired running in an open field, you get more tired running in the open field than you do walking through the woods. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but because I, I have more freedom to run. Amen. I don't have to Amen. watch what I'm doing. And so you look at what God is doing in this present circumstance and what he's doing in us because then when we come out on the other side, we have clear-cut instructions for Amen. something. Amen. Amen. That's good. Amen. Oh, uh, it's so good having you guys. Yes. It has been a little over an hour now. Y'all have got to come to the studio live. So I know. Once when this all is this is done, we will you have you guys. You'll be our first guest that we have Ooh. live um, in you. studio. Look um, to again, it. we apologize. Indeed, indeed. We thank you guys so much for, for um, being here and thank you for bearing with us in all the technical difficulties. For those of you all who are watching us. Thank you for being our trial run. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> for those of you who are watching us live on um, on YouTube or you are watching a replay on Facebook Live, we're going to have their information in the show notes. For those of you that are going to be listening on our podcast, thank you so much for listening. Their contact information as well as their email address will be in the show summary. So please make sure that you check them out. We love them. Thank you so much, Milo and Alicia Briscoe, a fruitful family. Thank you. Do you have any last any last words any of last encouragement words, for our last listeners? Thoughts. Oh wow! Let's wow. see. Wow, we don't have that much time. I know, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let's continue to love each other through this. Honestly, really, seek the Lord during this time because mm-hmm. this this is the time for it. Yep. You know, renew your first love. Yep. Yep. That's it. Amen. Amen. Well, you heard it. You heard it here. Uh, Milo and Alicia Briscoe with Fruitful Family. And we thank God for them joining us today. This is I'm, this is Tamika. I'm your boy E. Rodney. And we want to thank you guys so much for tuning in to Marriage Takeover. Marriage Takeover signing off. <laughs>